Hi guys. Remember last time you made a mistake and you were talking about it with your friends and family and they said to you, you were so hard on yourself. Perhaps you think, you're right, I am always too hard on myself. Or perhaps you think, you know what, I need to be a little bit tough on myself because that's how I can actually grow. And that's what builds my resilience. So no matter which thoughts that you have, the truth is we can be all very judgmental of ourselves especially when we make mistakes. So why is that? Why are we always so hard on ourselves? In this videos, I want to explore the reason why we can be so judgmental and the powers of empathy. Stay tuned. First of all, we can each and one of us, we all have a judge. This is the voice that is consistently and constantly making judgments on each seconds of our lives. We're either assessing our own performance, the people we're interacting with, or the surroundings, the circumstance we are in. Now that really comes from millions of years of evolution. As a species, we are sitting on top of the food chain. So we are really the ultimate survivor. That kind of ancestral energies um, is what we call the negativity bias, which means we're three times more likely to notice what is wrong. So that our ancestor was able to make those milliseconds um, judgments to notice the surroundings and make quick decision to save their lives. But the question is how useful that survival instinct is in modern society. Perhaps when you think about a situation where you are really stressed out and you really make you really need to make a good decision out your judge and the kind of judgment that you hear in your head will not necessarily be helpful but it will add um, more anxiety and uh, more frustrations into your decision making process so it is important to recognize the judgmental voice inside you if we if we are not paying enough attention to that it will quickly become quite a self-sabotaging energy. And um, on my some of my previous videos, I've talked about saboteurs. So judge, the judge is really the master saboteur. So this master saboteur, the judge, is the main reason why we are chronically critical of ourselves. We judge ourselves the way we look, our body shape, the way we speak, our achievements or the lack of it. If you think about a household situation, if the parents are always very critical of the kids, then naturally the kids absorb that kind of criticism and they become very self-critical of themselves as well. And it's so, so it continues. So one of the things that we might think of about this judge would be, but what about if I need it? You know, without the judge, how can I improve as a human being? How would I motivate and push myself? And it might be true that the judge will push you so hard that you achieve things. But ultimately, here's a question. What is the price that you're paying? So imagine you have achieved the goal that you set yourself out to achieve, constantly beating yourself up, criticizing yourself, um, and just ridiculing yourself for not being good enough then even when you achieve the goals, what is lack for you is not celebration, but perhaps just a sense of relief. And then um, the judge will give you more tasks and higher goals to, to achieve. So the price usually is really at the expense of your own happiness and your sense of own satisfaction. This is why it's important to think about how you can motivate yourself without the powers of the judge, but with the antidote, which is the powers of self-compassion, empathy. So feeling self-compassion doesn't mean that you just condole yourself for the, for the mistake you made or just letting it go without learning. On the contrary, feeling compassionate towards yourself means you, first of all, admit the fact that you have made the mistake and you are willing to learn from the process. So instead of adding more negativities on the experience, you actually get curious and ask yourself, how can I improve from this situation? 
when it comes to goal setting. Feeling compassion of oneself is how do I achieve that goal while actually enjoy the journey without burnout or without sacrificing my own sanity. Another thing about our judge is that it causes us to have imposter thoughts. Thoughts like, who am I to make this video? Who am I to host this podcast? They should not recognize my work. I have no experience. My art is rubbish. It shouldn't be published. It's not difficult for you to see how debilitating these thoughts are. So instead of catering to and really trust and believe the voices of your judge, start to question it. Are those thoughts true? Are you really that unworthy? The chances are we might have a little bit of self-doubt, but that's not always 100% the case. So by continuing to doubt your judge, the, the voice of your judge, you started to build the kind of confidence that you need to test the water and to try and to fail and to be better. Also, when you started to have, when you started to hear the voice of your judge, try to deploy a bit of empathy towards yourself. I'm feeling this way, but I'm trying the best I can. Or use the sage perspective. Maybe this is an opportunity for me to learn and grow. So my invitation for you is to really pay attention to the narratives of your judge on your daily, um, daily life. When does your judge talk to you? What does it sound like? When do you typically hear um, the voice of your judge turning around? The more you pay attention to it, the more you realize um, how frequent you actually will hear it. And the next thing is give yourself the kind of compassion and empathy you would um, give to somebody that you love and care about. I hope you find this video useful. Let me know what you think. What about your judge? And I will see you next week. Take care.